Okay, let's take a look at the 1990 World Series champion Cincinnati Reds. My Stratomatic team breakdown on the 1990 champs. And I'm going to share a kind of a funny and interesting story about this team at the end of the video. Um, First, let me get into the Cincinnati Reds offensively. Let me take a look at the top of their order. Now, um, I'm first going to look at Billy Hatcher and Barry Larkin, but I should make a note that according to the Stratomatic book versus righties, well, first of all, Hatcher was always the leadoff guy. However, against righties, they have Barry Larkin hitting second and versus lefties, they have Mariano Duncan hitting second. So what I'm actually going to do here is um, I'm going to share all three of their cards and use them as the top of the order assessment, um, which I don't believe I've actually done yet in any of these videos. But you do have to remember that Barry Larkin kind of serves two roles as far as his position in the lineup, hitting second against righties and third against lefties. So there you see the on-base chances, um, on-base percentages for Billy Hatcher, Barry Larkin and Mariano Duncan. You can see those numbers when you look at the three of them. Those are very solid numbers out of what you would get out of the top of the lineup. Now, let me take a look at the middle of the order for the 1990 Cincinnati Reds. Um, Let me look at Eric Davis's numbers. You could see his runner advance hits right there. Those numbers check out pretty good. Um... The Stratomatic book has Paul O'Neill as starting against right-handed pitching. Um, You could see his numbers with multiple base advance hits. Um, That number comes out a little bit low. Let me take a look at Chris Sabo numbers. He was the everyday third baseman. You see his numbers right there. And then I'm going to take a look at the right fielder against left-handed pitching, which was Glenn Braggs. You could see his numbers for multiple base advance hits. So the 1990 Cincinnati Reds offensively, it was a lot of mix and matching in the lineup. Let me dig a little deeper into the lineup. If you choose to play Bill Doran at second base, you could see he has very solid on base numbers versus right-handed pitching. Now let's take a look at the first baseman against right-handed pitching, Hal Morris. Let me take a look at his runner advance hits. You can see that number checks out very, very nicely, 10 out of 33. Now I could tell you when I've played with the 1990 Cincinnati Reds in the past, I don't play Mariano Duncan every day at second base. I actually use Bill Doran at the top of the lineup with Billy Hatcher. Um, So a lot of it really depends on what lineup you choose to go with for this team. In fact, I could also tell you I don't play Glenn Braggs in right field. I play Paul O'Neill all the time in right field, and usually I'll have him hitting like fifth against right-handed pitching and maybe seventh against left-handed pitching. But really, any combination that you choose to go with with this team, you're going to be looking pretty good offensively because the on-base numbers throughout the lineup are very solid. Um, Some of the numbers when it comes to driving runners in with either two asterisk hits or any form of an extra base hit, anything where you have multiple base advancement, those numbers are A little bit low from what you want to see from some of your three, four guys. But as I broke down the 1990 Reds offensively, I graded them out at a 4.3 total. Um, To me, the easy five out of five score here for me was their righty lefty mix, their versatility and their depth Um, on base percentage. I thought about giving them a five, but then I remembered, I was like, no, if you got to think about it, then it's not a five because Billy Hatcher considered the everyday leadoff guy. His on-base chances are a little bit low from what you want to see 
from a leadoff hitter. I came in for an on-base percentage score for the 1990 Reds at a four, and I scored the same for the middle of the order. So overall, I have their offense grading out at a 4.3, which is still a very, very good score for the 1990 Reds offense. Now, let me take a look at their defense here. And again, the middle infield defense is kind of dependent upon what combination you're playing. Everyday shortstop, Barry Larkin, obviously you're very solid at shortstop. And you can see Mariano Duncan's defensive rating is, that's not going to kill you at second base, but it's not ideal. Uh, Bill Doran, you see the same rating, but at least he has a much lower E rating. My middle of the infield defense score for the 1990 Reds comes out at a 3.5 out of 5. Let's take a look at the outfield defense. And again, this is a little dependent upon what combination you're playing with. When you're playing against right-handed pitching, you could see your outfield defense is completely locked down. You see the ratings right there. Now, this is the outfield defense against left-handed pitching if you choose to play Glenn Braggs in right field. So once again, I found myself kind of in between as far as how do I grade this defense? How do I measure? How do I play with the 1990 Cincinnati Reds? And what does the Stratomatic book have for the Cincinnati Reds? So I came up with an overall outfield score of a four out of five for the 1990 Cincinnati Reds, because you do have to really like what you have every day in left field and in center field. And As I just stated, when you face right-handed pitching and you have Paul O'Neill in right field, then your outfield defense is absolutely locked down. Um, Let's take a look at the E ratings. And this is a category which I'm absolutely in love with the 1990 Cincinnati Reds are the E ratings. Um, Even Hal Morris at first base, who's a four, has a very low E rating. And again, anyone who's ever played Stratomatic would know first base has a very high split. So more often than not, you're rolling for a split as opposed to just rolling the D20. Um, You're very solid at third with Chris Sabo. Obviously, you're very solid at shortstop, center field, and left field. And again, some of it is a little bit dependent on who you're playing in right field. I'm not particularly crazy about the first base option against left-handed pitching. You see Todd Benzinger's E rating right there. To me, that is way too high for for a first baseman. I just hate first basemen who have a double digit E rating. Even though I do really, really like some positions here when it comes to the E ratings, I could not give them a perfect five out of five score. So their E rating comes out at a 4.5. And when you look at the total defense, they grade out as a four out of five, which is very good for the 1990 Cincinnati Reds. Now let's take a look at the starting rotation. Let's start with the ace, Tom Browning. You see his on base chances there. Um, This is an example of where you have an ace where I just can't give him a perfect score out of, of a five out of five, but I do give him a very solid four out of five rating. This is a very good card. Um, and I do like the fact that at least he's consistent against lefties and righties. His card is not necessarily tilted one way to where when you're playing your opponent, they could stack their lineup a certain way. Um, let's take a look at the Reds starting pitching depth. Let's take a look at Jose Rio, Danny Jackson, and Jack Armstrong, the two, three, four starters. And you can see all these numbers check out very nicely, especially Jack Armstrong, who has the best numbers as a composite uh, compared to Rio and Jackson. So to me, this was a very easy score for starting rotation depth. They get a perfect five out of five score. So the 1990 Cincinnati Red starting pitching checks out at a 4.5 out of five. Now let's look at the 1990 Cincinnati Reds bullpen. Let's first take a look at the closer, Randy Myers. No surprise here. He gets a very easy score of a five out of five. Excellent numbers versus both lefties and righties. And then when we look at the setup guys, primarily Rob Dibble, you see his numbers are excellent. You see Norm Charlton, who also started that year. You could throw him in the starting rotation if you choose to. Uh, Three inning reliever. You can see his numbers are a little bit high and he's really not what you would consider like 
a lefty specialist. Um, but it is nice that he's a three inning reliever and your closer, Randy Myers is two. Rob Dibble, the setup guy is two. So I had no problem giving the 1990 Cincinnati Reds bullpen a perfect score of a five out of five. So there are your numbers for the 1990 Cincinnati Reds. Offense grades out at a 4.3. Defense is a four out of five. Starting rotation, four and a half out of five. And the bullpen scores at a five out of five. So overall, they average out at a 4.45, just under a four and a half. And you know how much I regard your rating if you're at four and a half or higher. I really do feel this highly about the 1990 Cincinnati Reds. This is a very good team. This is an excellent team. In fact, let me share the story with you about the 1990 Cincinnati Reds. One day I get a text message from my brother. He was at a um, baseball card trading shop somewhere and he happened to strike up a conversation with someone who brought up Stratomatic and my brother texted me and he just asked me, who would you say are the best teams you've ever come across in Stratomatic? And I kind of had to think about it for a little bit. And one of the teams that I mentioned were the 1990 Cincinnati Reds, because to me, this team checks all the boxes that you look for in a really solid Stratomatic team. Number one, they've got very good starting pitching. Number two, they have a terrific bullpen. Number three, They're good at getting on base, and they have a lot of versatility in the lineup. There's a lot of interchangeable parts. It's not a team where you say, okay, I got to get something out of my number three or my number four hitter, or I'm not going to score any runs today. And also, I really do like this team defensively. Um, When you play certain combinations that I spoke on before, you could have you could run a defensive team out there with absolutely no holes defensively, which is really very, very rare in Stratomatic. And I would have to go back and check my previous videos, but I don't think I've come up with a E rating score overall for a defense of a four and a half out of five. I don't think I've ever scored a team that high. I would have to go back and check that. I know I've scored teams defensively as a total defensive score of a four out of five before, but I don't think I ever had a team score so high when you look at the E rating category. So once again, that is my score for the, that's my average score for the 1990 Cincinnati Reds, um, the world champion Cincinnati Reds from the year 1990. I thank you all for watching and stay tuned for my next video. My next team breakdown will be on the 1980 Baltimore Orioles. Have a good day, everyone.